Barry Drafters, hope you had a good pre-release weekend. I did a video a little bit like this after Dominaria remastered and just kind of looking over the drafts that I did. And people seemed to enjoy it and I thought it was quite a fun one to put together. So I thought I'd do that again for after pre-releases. And this was for actually all will be one. The two pre-releases, this was the first deck that I played. So it went one, two. And it was fine. I lost to a red-white aggro deck, which just curved out really quick. I think game one they played... Urubrask's Forge into the Token Doubler thing, which was just, a, a, you know, I, I dealt with Token Doubler, but it was still too much value to fight against. And yeah, that was just a, re a really strong aggro deck. Uh, match two, I lost to, well, essentially I lost to a Nissa match two, and yeah, less about that, the better. But then game three, it went it was close to one, and it was it was a well-fought battle. I think in that one, I managed to curve out quite nicely as well in a couple of the matches. Some key cards, so the rares that I was playing, Conjure of Worlds, was pretty cool, maybe a little slow. I'd definitely happy to play it in sealed, but I would be a little bit more wary of it in draft. The uh, the spheres, which you can tap and sack to draw a card, it plays pretty well with those, obviously. But, you know, sometimes you're just playing a, a six drop every turn uh, because they've got to remove it or deal with it. Otherwise, they lose, and that, that could be a pretty good game ender in a green deck, I think. Green Sun's Twilight was fine. Um, it did... Pretty much what you expect, tap, uh, tap 5, x equals 5, get a 6-drop creature off the top of your deck and a land. I did cast it essentially as a divination at one point when I knew I needed my 4th land drop and I didn't have it. So turn 3 I cast it just to really get a land and a creature in my hand and that was perfectly good as well. I, I ended up winning that game. Didn't see much of Glissa, saw Malira a little bit, didn't do a huge amount but they're both really strong. Well, Glissa's really strong, I know Glissa's really strong and I just didn't really get to uh, see it played very often. And some of the lower rarity cards, uh, Vivisection Evangelist was definitely worth a splash. Really powerful card if you can try and get that uh, corrupted off. Tyranax Atrocity was uh, really good with the Venomous Brutalizer. They're both strong cards. Toxic 3 is very, very powerful. And I did curve Brutalizer into Atrocity in one game where the opponent probably had the upper hand to start with. But then I hit them for 8 damage and 6 uh, Toxic. And yeah, that was going to be a way to end it. And then Kanker Bloom, that was really good with the Conduit of whatever it was in the last one where you can replay stuff from the graveyard because there's a lot of artifacts knocking about and this can just deal with them they've got enchantment removal as well it's, it's really good but i was able to in one turn sack it recast it and then sack it again so you know it was it was a really good way to um get the multiple cards out but you don't need that to go for it it's a two mana three two with upside it's, it's a really really strong card and a definite reason to go into green if you see it fairly early in the packs the second deck that I played, this one went 3-1. A lot better, although I did feel when I was building the deck that I would have been happy with a 2-2 because it, I don't know, there was some strong cards in here, but the splashes were a bit greedy, and I think I did get a little bit lucky with it. Clearly, we've got some strong rares in it. Blue Sun's Twilight was really good. Double Blue Pip made us a bit wary to splash without having very good fixing. I had a, um, a prophetic prism, not prophetic prism, the artifact, uh, which you can splash with, but that was really the only fixing I had. Um, but it was great whenever I cast it, it, and I never really struggled to cast it for X equals 5. It turned every game that I cast it in. Reva Rear Evo was a cool card. I think I saw an opponent go off with it more than I did, but I, it seemed quite powerful. I, it was one of those ones that's quite difficult to um, get, see what it's like, but the Battle Cry effect in itself is pretty good. And you can target a creature which isn't attacking, which can help with like not cancelling out that damage and i did have an opponent say um you know we had a conversation and they didn't quite twig that their toxic creature wouldn't deal uh, the toxic damage at first he thought it, it would get the might and it would do toxic damage but the um the damage is prevented so it never does the damage the combat damage to the player to uh, get that toxic damage on them and then kaya was absolutely bonkers uh, it's a really, really powerful card. We've seen these really powerful rares in the format. The, the Planeswalkers in particular are really good. Minus three with three loyalty left and it's hexproof. You can remove their biggest threat. You can get a version of it, even though it's a 1-1 one, one flyer. But, you know, that can be a really good swing. And it just does everything you really want to in a seven-mana Planeswalker. Yeah, okay, you, need, you can't really splash it very easily, but it was a powerful card. This deck has this, this previous as well. I had, uh, I think I had five gold rares in very different colours, so it was a bit annoying that I couldn't play them all, but it's just the way it's going to go sometimes. Some of the lower rarity cards, Prosthetic Injector, really impressed me a lot more than I thought it would. It's good on defence as well as offence. Equip 1, as we've seen before, is a really, really powerful line to see on equipment, and it can just get that damage. You equip it to a flyer, you get in for an extra toxic, you leave something back to block with, and you can equip it back to that, and you're absolutely fine. Shoulders Head Cleaver as well, I found was really good. That uh, Toxic 2 was strong, and having 4 toughness with 2 power, it blocks a lot there, early toxic creatures, so you can play this turn 4, 
stop them from attacking and then attacking. And there's a card which gives indestructible and death touch in the format as well. And if you can attack them with this, they've got to double block it. Then you can just cast that and take out two of their creatures really, really nicely. Vanishing to Eternity I want to talk about because this card, I was convinced to cut it from my first deck. It was played on the side. But I really think it should have been played in my first deck. Played it in the second deck and it seemed absolutely great. Sometimes I cast it for six, sometimes I cast it for three. Just depending on what was going on, I took out uh, um, Wandering, not Wandering, yeah, the Emperor, Wandering Emperor the, in a couple of games with it as well. Still lost those games. That was the one loss I had with this deck. But, it, you know, it, whenever I play, whenever I had it, I played it and it felt like it really had an important impact on the game. And then it attracts a Skitter Fang. Uh, three mana, two, two. Re can, uh, comes in with three oil counters on it. You can remove an oil counter, give something flying, vigilance, death touch, or lifelink until end of turn. That's a combat. And I found this is really good usually just to give one of your toxic creatures flying whether it's to get in for the third point of poison or to take them to nine or ten was really really good uh i know i kind of went ag aggressive with poison one game got them to nine then just really need to draw a proliferate which i did and that won me my last game of the tournament i think so yeah it seemed to be quite fun there was a couple of worries when we were playing, and I've talked about it with friends since, it just seems very, very bomby and very, very aggro. Sealed was a little bit slower, but it still felt that it's going to be very aggro. I've seen the early access event, which I didn't get to play in this time because I was otherwise engaged. Um, but, you know, they did say white was very strong, aggro was very strong. But we've also got these strong rares. Eternal Wonder and Nyssa were two that I played against, which seemed really good. Um, the Kaya seemed very good as well. White and Twilight I have pegged as going to be one of the better rares in the set. But then Thrunbreaker Silence actually is probably the more correct card for the the problem spell in the format, I suppose, because it's just so hard to deal with and it's a really miserable design for limited. That said, there's had some very good removal in the format. There's some very good answers. Um, I suppose a lot of these are removal and answers in themselves, so that is possibly where some of the issues are. Uh, we'll have to kind of see how the rest of the format turns out. It's still early days. I think after my first pre-release, I didn't feel great. After the second one, I felt a little better, but not blown away. And to be honest, that's not a great place to be at the start of the format. But we will have to wait and see. And I'm interested to see how it turns out over the next few weeks. And all I have to say now is thanks for watching. If you follow along at, at Twitter, at PLD underscore MTG. Subscribe to the channel. And for all those who do support the channel, I have put a code on the screen now. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you again soon. Bye.